to the class. We hope you guys are having a great day. We're excited to do some crafting here from, with Michaels Community Classrooms. Um, my name is Jesse, and we are here with Emma in the studio and we are from Plaid. And today we're really excited. We're going over some last minute gift ideas. So I know a lot of people are at home still, of course. Um, it's kind of a weird holiday season. Um, but here's some ideas that was things you might have around your house already or things you can grab really quickly and easily. Um, just sweet little gifts you can leave on friends' doorsteps and things like that or for your family in your home. Um, just a few last minute things in case there's some people um, you still need to get gifts for or still uh, just wanna make gifts for. Um, but yeah, Emma's gonna walk us through a few of these um, today. She's gonna let us know how some of them are made. Most of them are made with Mod Podge. We've got some that are made with folk art paint. So we're excited to show you how these are done. Um, I will be uh, moderating here. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat and I'll relay them to Emma. Um, as usual, of course, all of these supplies can be purchased at Michael's um, online or in store. Um, and when you're finished, if you guys decide to craft along with us or you make this later, um, make sure you post it on social media. We'd love to see it. And you can tag Plaid Crafts or hashtag Plaid Crafts and also hashtag make it with Michael's so we can see um, all of the beautiful things that you're creating. Um, and also, as usual, in case you're new to these, this is being recorded. So after this is over, um, we'll give it about 24 hours or so, and this will be posted on the Michaels Community Classroom page. So um, you can go back and refer to it in case you forget something or you want to rewatch it while you're crafting. Um, but yeah, without further ado, here is Emma to show us how to make some awesome last minute um, holiday gifts. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Happy early holidays. Um, whatever holidays you're celebrating at home, I'm going to show you four, I think four, really great personalized gift ideas to give to the loved one in your life. So I know there was a photo in the event listing on michaels.com. So I'm just kind of going to go over all of the four gifts that we're going to go over today, just so you guys have a little bit of a heads up. So we're going to be um, making these really cute personalized mugs with a Mod Podge dishwasher safe. We're also going to be making these really cute personalized um, pet silhouette ornaments. I'm really excited to show you guys this one. You can personalize it with your pet at home, with your dog, your cat, your bunny, your goldfish, whatever little friend you have at home, or whatever friend your loved one has at home too. That's a really great gift idea. Um, also, these fun treat bags that we made using folk art home decor chalk paint, really simple to do, um, and they're really elegant looking. It's a great way to kind of elevate your uh, treat giving game this holiday season. <laughs> and then uh, last but not least, I hope you guys can see this beautiful tray behind me that we made using Mod Podge Ultra and some uh, mosaic pieces that are available at Michael's. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first craft we're going to do is these really cute personalized mugs. And like Jesse said, um, all of these crafts are a really great, simple, easy, quick way to just craft at home, um, craft safely, and then give these gifts to your loved ones, leave it on their doorstep, give it to them in person, whatever you're comfortable doing this year. So there's a couple different ways that we can start doing this craft. You can either go online and find one of these um, letters, one of these really cute little pattern letter shapes, or Michael's has a great selection of crafting paper. They have um, really one of the best selections on the market. So um, you can use any of the, their paper packs or their loose scrapbooking paper and um, either use a stencil. I know um, Fulcart has some really great stencils at Platt, or, sorry, at Michael's, and you can um, put your stencil onto your paper and then trace it and then cut it out. Or if you don't have a stencil, you can get, um, you know, you can type this up on PowerPoint, Word, whatever you have at home, or go to Google Images and get a picture of a letter and do it the same way. Cut this out and then trace it and then cut it out from your patterned paper. So I'm going to show you guys um, how to do it with this um, printed letter. And if you want me to, uh, I can also show you how to do it with um, a picture of a letter online. So let me know which of these papers you would want me to do, the floral, the marble, or the wood. OK, so we're going to get our scissors. And it doesn't really matter what kind of scissors you use. Um, any scissors would work. And we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting. Catherine said she wants to see the marble paper. Okay, so we have one <laughs> for marble so far. Marble, another marble from Marion. <laughs> okay. And 
like I said, I really love this gift because um, if you are a, a little late to making your personalized gifts at home or you're late to your online shopping from wherever you like to buy personalized gifts, um, we are cutting it close people. So we need to do some quick stuff to um, give personalized gifts to our loved ones. So this is just a really easy way to do it yourself at home. Okay, just be careful around those edges because you want it to um, keep the shape of the letter and you want it to be as straight as you can get it. Just be gentle with it. So people are asking um, where to find the supplies needed for this. Um, I will, we will continue listing the supplies as we go. Um, this was kind of like a roundup of, of projects. So I'm not sure that there was an exact list of all of the items that we'll be using in the event listing, um, but I'll make sure to put them all in the chat as we go. So you can grab a screenshot or jot them down um, or take a picture of the chat with your phone just to make sure that you guys know um, what it is that Emma's using. But again, all of these items can be found at Michael's um, in store or online. Um, or they're just household items that you might find, you know, at a dollar store or just something you have at home already. So, yeah. So in this one, um, we're using a mug that you can get at a thrift store um, or, you know, if you have a mug at home already, just whatever mug you like. And then you can either get a um, stencil and a paper pack or you can just print out your own letter. So I think Marble wins. So we'll go ahead and show you guys just how to do this in case you're curious. Yeah. Um, so I'm, yeah, so I'm gonna trace this um, P really quick. Or you could use transfer paper, is that right, Emma? Yeah, absolutely. So if you had transfer paper, um, what you would do for that, for that is you would just um, lay your shape. So you would have your pattern paper and then you would lay your transfer paper down over the paper and make sure that the chalky side of the transfer paper is down touching the surface of your paper. Usually there's a little sign at the bottom that says this side up, but if there's not, you can kind of tell by the texture of each side. And then you lay your shape on top that you're gonna be tracing and get either a pencil, um, a pen, the back of a paintbrush, and just trace the lines that you want to show up on your paper. It's really easy. Guys, I'd love to know if you guys are celebrating any um, holiday traditions at home. I'm always so interested to see what every um, family's holiday traditions are because they're all so unique. So yeah, anybody doing anything to... different this year? Like yeah, it's kind of a weird year. So we'd yeah, love to see what you guys are going to be up to for the holidays. Mm -hmm. I love that paper, Emma. That's so pretty. It looks like real marble. I know, isn't it pretty? I had a hard time choosing between those three patterns, so I thought I'd let you guys decide today for me. <laughs> no, smart. Like I said, their tradition is pizza for Christmas dinner. I love that. Ooh, that's fun. Nice and easy, nice and relaxing. Yes, after no you're stress. done opening presents or whatever you do, um, you don't have to think anymore. You can just relax and lunch <laughs> on some pizza. That's a great tradition. Yeah. So are you gonna show us how to trace that PM? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. So once you cut it out, you would cut the inside too, and then grab your pencil, your marker, whatever. And you just want to go and you just want to trace it. Super simple. I love it. Yeah. And I like to use a pencil on darker papers just because the, um, the lead shows. You can see the graphite. Well. Yeah. Cricket said um, their kids don't like any traditional foods, so. Oh, well, there you um, go. Chris said, my family set up a Zoom get together as we shelter in place and son's family are military so they can join. I love that, that's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. We'll still get to see everybody's faces for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I love it, I love all of these guys, that's awesome. We're, we're doing something similar this year, my family, Zoom, 
Zoom holidays. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna, I have a little plate here. I'm just gonna put that there to stabilize it so that this stays level. Oh, it's, smart. it's kind of the same height as my handle on my mug. But I'm going to grab my dishwasher safe Mod Podge. If you don't know about dishwasher safe Mod Podge, it's a great um, product that um, we sell at Plaid and they have available at Michael's. And um, it locks your paper or whatever you're Mod Podging that so that it's able to be um, washed in the dishwasher. Okay. So you just use it like any other Mod Podge. It's really easy to use and the uh, finish on it is a glossy finish. So I'm just gonna dip it in and then I'm going to brush it onto my mug. And I kind of like to hover over whatever I'm gonna be Mod Podging just so I can get a really nice placement. And then I'm gonna place it down, tap, tap, tap. Kind of smooth it out with my fingers. You can use a brayer if you want to. I just like to use my fingers. Just make sure all the air gets out from underneath my paper. Okay. And now I'm going to Mod Podge over it. And the trick about Mod Podge dishwasher safe is that you wanna make sure that the Mod Podge gets all around the paper because it kind of acts as a barrier when you're gonna wash it. So you wanna make sure that there's no um, like breaches in your design. You wanna make sure that the Mod Podge is really getting into all the edges, not into, but above all the edges of your paper. And then you are left with a really beautiful personalized mug. It's that easy. I love that. I mean, that's great. That was so simple. That's a, and know, such a cute fast. gift. Yeah. I mean, you can really just whip these out if you have a lot of gifts to give this year. Yeah, it's you can find idea. those mugs super inexpensively. Yeah, or, you know, get them at the thrift store. Super cheap. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to our next craft. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through this one because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I just wanted to give you guys some inspiration of some gift ideas for the holidays. So um, for this one, you uh, just get a canvas bag, a cotton bag, a linen bag, whatever you have, and then you get your stencil tape. So Michaels has some really great um, one inch stencil tape. Right now I'm just using masking tape and you just um, take your tape and you lay your canvas bag flat and then you tape over it in a series of stripes. And then once the tape is really um, sealed onto the bag, you're just gonna get your flat brush. You don't even need a stencil brush. And uh, for this craft in particular, we used Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. It is a really awesome um, paint to use. We like to use it for furniture. It's ultra matte. You don't have to sand or prime it at all. It's a really great paint. It's honestly one of my favorite paints that Folk Art offers. Oh, here we have, it's, this is what the stencil tape would look like. Just one inch, probably actually three quarter inches. And then you just um, lay it over your bag in a series of stripes, lay it down, make sure it's flat and um, really fl uh, flush to your surface. And then you take your home decor chalk paint and you just paint it in stripes. You can, uh, you know, remove your paint or sorry, remove your uh, tape after it dries or while it's still wet, either one would work. And then you have your bag. And then um, Michaels has a bunch of different wooden tags and they also carry chalkboard paint, which is really cool to use. If you haven't used it before, it makes any surface into a chalkboard. So I just painted my tag with some uh, chalkboard paint. And then I was able to write little messages onto my tag in chalk. And then it's removable with some, um, with a paper towel. And so you can, um, you know, label whatever the gift is. You can write a fun little message. It's a great way to just let people know you're thinking about them. Put an I love you message, whatever floats your boat. And then that's that one. Super simple, that. super easy. It's a, just a great way to really personalize your goodie bags that you'll be giving out this year if you decide to do that. That's a cute gift idea. Yeah. Okay, this one I'm really excited about. So what you're gonna need for this, so for that last one, you guys, all you needed was your canvas bag, uh, folk art home decor chalk paint, 
stencil tape, a wooden tag. Did I say chalkboard paint? Chalkboard paint. Yep. And then chalk. And that's that one. Okay, so moving on to our next one. We're going to need um, any type of flat wooden shape. Michaels has really great wood coasters, so that's what we're going to be using today, but you can really use any flat wood shape. It honestly doesn't even have to be wood. It can be any flat shape that you can turn into a flat ornament. And you're going to need a portrait of your pet or whoever's pet you're making, some scissors, um, some folk art paint. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own um, stain just using regular acrylic folk art paint. Um, or you can just, as you can see here, look how cute, you can just paint it right on. You don't even have to make a stain, but you can make a stain really any color you want. But today we want to make it look like real stained wood. So we're using folk art real brown and that color is available at Michael's. We've just found that's a really great color to, um, to achieve a really, um, authentic stained wood look. And then titanium white, because that's um, the white color, as you can see here. I'm just going to lay this down for reference. Oops. So yeah, we have our portrait, our coaster, our scissors, our paint, and then you're going to need just a regular flat brush and a stencil brush. And that's all you need for this one. And obviously, um, you know, some embroidery floss or some twine, whatever you want to uh, attach to the back of your ornament to hang on your tree. So just any flat paintbrush and any just medium sized stencil brush will work for this, right? Totally. All right, so let's start off by making our stain. So I'm just gonna grab um, a little disposable cup and my brown paint. And we're gonna mix a ratio of two parts paint to one part water. So I'm gonna add some of my folk art paint and then I just have a bottle of water here. I'm just gonna add a splash of water. And any water's fine, right? Just from the tap? Yep, this is straight from the tap. And I have a little craft stick here to um, mix up my paint, but you can use your paintbrush if you want. But I'm just using a craft stick today. And you just want to make sure that um, you mix it really well because you don't really want any paint lumps. You want it to um, really be incorporated in, in uh, just Well mixed. Okay, so that's a good consistency. I'll hold it up here if you guys can see. Okay, so it's kind of the consistency of milk. Of yeah. milk. Yeah, maybe like some hot cocoa since we're since it's winter time. <laughs> there you go. That was cheesy. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna grab our flat brush and we're just gonna treat this as it's normal paint. We're just gonna paint it on like how you would paint. Paint, paint, paint. And then you also need a paper towel, but most people have that at home. You're gonna grab a paper towel and you're just going to wipe off that excess paint. Kind of rub it around. And just remove that paint. Rub it with your paper towel. Um, Arisha wants to know, why did you add water? What is the difference? Okay, so we added water because we were making our own paint. I mean, sorry, our own stain. We wanted our paint to be a lot thinner so that um, it wouldn't have as good of a hide on our ornament. We want it to not be as opaque. We want it to be thinned down just so it looks a little bit more transparent like it normally would appear just straight out of the bottle. Yeah, full so acrylic paints are super rich and creamy. And so that yeah. when you paint them on something, it is full coverage. It's usually just one coat and you're done. So naturally yeah. um, it would be completely brown. It wouldn't, you wouldn't see the wood grain anymore. So that's why Emma thinned down with a little bit of water just to stain the wood because she didn't want full coverage. She wanted that pretty stained wood effect. Yeah. I think you guys can better see um, with a straight up head camera, but you see how you can still see the wood grain on the coaster and you, um, can I see that? Yeah. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint the edges just so it looks more complete. And we're doing the same technique here. We're just painting the edges and then we're wiping it off. And um, you guys, if you try this at home and you don't like um, the finish, 
on your ornament and you want it to be um, have a little bit more coverage, you can always just go around and do another coat of your stain. Get the edges. I really love this gift. I mean, I think just like I've given this gift to somebody before and they were really wowed by it. It's just such a personalized gift. Um, and it's really impressive too. I mean, you would think that it's hard to do, but once you guys will see, it's super, super simple. Yes, and people love their pets. So get them any yes. gift that involves their pets and they're gonna love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right, so um, before we start stenciling, we wanna make sure that our coaster is super dry. And because we added some water to our paint, it's gonna take a little bit longer than it normally would, just regular paint to evaporate. So that means that um, we're gonna probably use our blow dryer and just uh, give it a good once over on our ornament just so that we it's totally dry before we start stenciling. So I'm gonna head and blow dry this for just a second. That's good. So if I hadn't have blow dried that, um, the white paint would have mixed with the brown paint and we wouldn't get that crisp, clean white color that we are looking for. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my brush in my water so it doesn't dry out. It probably won't because there's a lot of water in that stain, but just good to do that. All right, so now we're gonna set this aside and grab our picture of our dog. And something to note before we start cutting, we wanna save the outside part of our dog. So it doesn't matter if you know you're your, uh, scissors, your cutting lines get a little crazy. We don't wanna save our dog piece. We wanna save the outline because virtually today we're making our own stencil. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting. Um, somebody's asking Emma, what do you do if you accidentally cut a piece you didn't mean to cut? Um, you can always break out your stencil tape and you can tape it back together. Or um, it doesn't matter what kind of paper you use. This is just straight from my um, wet toner printer. It doesn't matter what kind of printer you have at home because we're not transferring this onto anything. You could use cardstock, you could use printer paper, whatever you have. So you can always print out another image. I thank you. Um, Arisha wants to know, is that your dog? This is not my dog. <laughs> this is a beautiful, gorgeous male boxer. And I have a tiny little pipsqueak named Chester at home who's a miniature pincher. And that, that pink one looks more like your Chester. <laughs> yeah, this looks more like Chester. <laughs> He's just a little guy. Yeah, Chester is an eight-year-old miniature pincher. He's a little kooky. That's why I love him. Okay, so now that we have that all cut out, the portrait, I'm going to kind of cut it down a little bit more, leaving some space at the top that I can take. But I'm going to cut it out a little bit more just so I can um, see how I want it to um, be on my coaster. Okay, and I like how that looks. Here's another tip real quick. 
I'm going to tape down my coaster to my workspace just so um, it doesn't slide around underneath my, my DIY stencil. I love tight. this gift. It's so custom. Yeah. And it's super easy to do. Yeah, it is simple. Seriously. Okay. And you don't have to tape it down. I just like to. Better safe than sorry. Exactly. Maria said, I like this idea. Thanks, Maria. <laughs> and I'm gonna um, squeeze some of my titanium white onto my palette. And I'm gonna grab my stencil brush. So, if, you know, we've stenciled in a couple of our tutorials here at Plaid that we've, um, shown on our Michael's community classroom classes before. But if you've never stenciled before, you want to get some paint onto your brush. And then you're going to take your paper towels and offload it. You want to have barely any paint on your brush when you're stenciling. That just leads to uh, crisper lines and it won't cause any bleeding under your stencil, no matter if it's an adhesive stencil, if it's a paper stencil. And then you're going to go um, just pounce perpendicular to your stencil. And just keep um, applying more paint to your brush, but don't uh, ever let your brush get too much paint on it. Marla said you can use this as a coaster too if you glaze the top. I love cool. that idea. It's a, a great idea, Marlis. You could seal them with dishwasher safe Mod Podge too, like we just use on the mugs and that would seal those coasters really well and protect them from um, any condensation that you know your glasses might um, get onto the coasters. You sure can. And once we're down here and we're not touching any of the edges of our stencil, um, you know, we don't have to be as cautious about how much paint we have on our brush because it's not interfering with the stencil so it can't bleed under it. So we're gonna get crazy over here. We're gonna go back and just make sure that our white is as opaque as we want it. All right, now it's time for the big reveal. Can I get a drum roll, please, Jesse? That looks so good. Look how cute. I love that. That turns out great. Yeah, it's super simple. You can use it with any silhouette of your pet. Make sure that the picture of your pet is actually a silhouette so that you get all the really good shapes. But yeah, it's super simple, super easy. Awesome, that looks so good. Everybody's loving it, Em. Good. All right, recycle my scraps. And now I'm gonna just walk you guys through how to make this beautiful tray that you see behind me. So I'm gonna go grab that. I'm excited for this one. This is a cool one and so simple too. It doesn't look simple. It's one of those gifts that or just pieces for yourself that looks very intense, but it's actually much simpler than it seems. Totally. Okay, so what you're gonna need is just a wood tray that you can get at your home decorating store. Um, you know, Michael's has some trays, um, anywhere to get your tray. 
And then a little tip I would like to give you guys is you can um, just use a pencil or a pen, whatever you have at home and trace kind of the loose shapes that you want to achieve with all your mosaic pieces. And then once you have your shapes lined out and where you want them to be on your tray, here's the fun part. If you have a old plate at home that maybe has a, trip, a chip in it, or you uh, are going to the thrift store and you see some really cool plates that um, don't really match your uh, decor in your kitchen, but you really like the pattern of them or the color of them, you can grab those plates and you can um, put them in a like a bag that's covered in a lot of fabric. You have to super be careful when you do this. Like a pillowcase or something a like that. pillowcase, yes. Mm -hmm. And take a hammer to it and, um, you know, beat the crud out of it <laughs> until it breaks. And then you have your broken plate and then you can lay it into your tray into the design that you want. Also, Michael's has some really great mosaic tiles and some really cute glass pebbles. So really whatever you have on hand will work just great for this project. So once you have all those things, you have your shapes lined out and you have all your pieces, you're gonna wanna grab your Mod Podge Ultra. If you don't know what Mod Podge Ultra is, it is a spray on Mod Podge formula. It is not an aerosol. It comes in a like spray applicator, just kind of like a um, cleaner or something, just like a not normal spray bottle. And it is um, no brush strokes. It's not tacky. It's super durable. It's multi-surface, indoor, outdoor. Um, obviously, it's like regular Mod Podge too. It's an all-in-one adhesive and sealer. And so you're going to want to um, spray onto your tray. And you want it to kind of almost puddle up where you're spraying it on and then go ahead and place your mosaic tiles. But you want, you definitely want to be generous with it because the more you have, um, the longer it'll last. So once you're really um, give it a generous application of your Mod Podge Ultra, you're going to arrange your mosaic tiles and then leave it to dry so that they all stay in place. And then you're going to go ahead and use it as a sealer again, just so it stays um, good for indoor and outdoor use. So, you know, that way it's multi-surface. Well, this is multi-surface, that way your tray is multi-surface that you can um, put it anywhere. And then it's all good and sealed and you have a beautiful homemade tray. I love that, Emma. It's, it's again, it's such a beautiful and complex looking um, piece, but it, it really mm -hmm. is so much simpler than it looks. It's just putting tiles in, spraying it with Mod Podge Ultra, letting it cure and you have this awesome tray. I love, you can do any sort of patterns. You could do a letter in there. You could do just yes. all kinds of different colors. I mean, you know, it's endless what you can do with this sort of project. I love it so much. Like this looks super expensive, but you know, you probably do it with 20 bucks or less. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, Emma, thank you so much. Um, thank you to all of you who joined us today. We hope you got inspired. We hope you got some ideas for some last minute gifts. Um, like I said, if you decide to make any of these projects or make any projects using our um, product, please hashtag plaid crafts um, and also tag hashtag make it with Michaels. We'd love to see what you guys are doing. Um, again, this recording will be posted within 24 hours or so on the Michaels Community Classroom page. Um, our next class with plaid is going to be our Monday night paint night. So join us. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to be painting a really fun Christmas painting just for in time for Christmas. Um, so we hope to see you guys then and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Happy holidays.